Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I am the author of the Break the Cycle website that you may be looking at. I want to introduce you to the second of eight self-study lessons that comprise this educational nonprofit website. This lesson has to do with a skill that everyone needs and in my experience for studying this for 40 years few people have. It's the skill of effective thinking and effective communication. Uh, I suspect if someone asked you what kind of how good a communicator are you? You might say, well I'm good enough, I'm alright. You've been doing it for years, haven't you? Lesson two will show you some things that you don't know you need to know about effective thinking and effective communication. Uh, this lesson is composed of several different main topics. They are uh, some basics, which I'm about to summarize for you, uh, seven learnable skills, which I challenge you to name. I bet you can't. If you can't name them, you're probably not using them. If you're not using them, you're probably communicating at maybe 50% of the effectiveness that you could have. All right? The lesson number two also contains some real specific tips that I've learned across 40 years of listening, observing, and studying this complex subject. The lesson also includes a web page that lists specific communication blocks that I've seen people use. There are well over 20 of them. Uh, why not take a look at this worksheet in lesson two and see which blocks have you been using? More importantly, what can you do to stop using them? The final piece of this lesson is some practical applications of all these other parts of the lesson. Um, how can you communicate effectively with a wide range of human problems or problem people? For instance, people that are angry, people that are uh, aggressive, people that are shy, people that are silent, people that repeat each other. How can you communicate effectively with such people? You'll find the answer in this lesson. Let me ask you a couple of basic questions to try and prove my allegation that you probably don't know what you don't know. What's the purpose in your opinion? Could you tell an average 18 year old why do we communicate? Why? We do it all the time. Been doing it for years, decades. Why do you do it? There are six reasons we communicate. I bet you can't name them. You'll find out in lesson two. There are four ways we communicate face to face. And we exchange four messages all the time with each other. And you're decoding four messages. You and I are talking together, which we're not, you're listening. If we're talking together and exchanging info back and forth, we are unconsciously decoding four different messages at once. You know what they are? If you don't know what they are, how can you tell if you're communicating effectively? In case you wonder, these messages are, here's what you think, here's what you feel, here's what you need, and here's what you are doing. And you're decoding those things from me also. So we've got eight messages going at once, simultaneously. Our brains, the miraculous things they are, decode this without our even knowing it. Once you become aware of this, you can do a lot more with communication. I mentioned that this lesson shows in detail how to do seven learnable skills. I propose that your parents never knew these skills and didn't teach them to you. Neither did the schools you attended. That's a pretty high charge. What are these skills? The very first one is awareness. That's a skill. It's a learnable skill. <clears throat> awareness of what? What's going on in you? What's going on in me right now? What's going on between us? And what's going on around us? Four different awareness zones. Professional therapists learn to do this like breathing. Most people aren't professional therapists. How aware are you in a social situation? Hmm? 
The second of seven skills that this lesson will teach you is how to think effectively, not logically. One thing as a therapist I've noticed listening to over a thousand people is that frequently they think and speak in fuzzy terms. They use something um, called fuzzy pronouns, fuzzy adjectives. For example, have you heard somebody recently say, we got to fix this problem? Well, the, the listener may know what this problem is, or they may misassume what it is. Thinking clearly invites you to get real specific in critical communications about avoid vague pronouns. It, that, them, those people, that thing, this problem, those can easily be misconstrued and cause communication problems. So thinking clearly is a second learnable skill. The third skill has got several names, all of which mean the same thing. The name I like comes from Stephen Covey. Uh, it is empathic listening, learning how to listen. Some people call this active listening. Um, some people call it mirroring. These mean the same thing. It's learning to say back to the speaker what you think they are saying in your own language doesn't mean you agree with them. It means you're trying hard to understand what they're trying to convey. So empathic listening is the third skill you can learn. The fourth skill most people have never been trained in and are unaware of. It can be called, for lack of a better term, digging down. What I've discovered in 40 years of pondering and research is Communication exists to, to fill needs. Most people only for, focus on surface needs instead of digging down to the real needs underneath them. If you only try and fill the surface needs, guess what? The needs underneath them go unmet and problems will return. Here's a quick example. You and I uh, are both vying for the car. We have one car between us. So I say, I need the car. The other person says, well, I need the car too. If you don't dig down, you're going to get stuck on arguing who gets the car. If you dig down, what you find out is, what do you need the car for? I need to get to my dental appointment by 3.30 and get safely back home by 6.30 in order to prepare dinner. Oh, well then, you need transportation, not the car. Well, yeah. So, could you take a cab? Well, that's an option. Could you get a friend to drive you? Maybe. Could you take the bus? Maybe. Could I do those things? That's digging down and brainstorming to fill your real needs. So, digging down is the fourth of seven skills that this lesson will teach you. It's very powerful. The next skill also is one that most people are unfamiliar with. It can be called meta-talk, M-E-T-A, meta-talk. Meta-talk, meta-dancing is dancing about dancing. Meta-writing is writing about writing. So meta-talk is talking about how you talk. It uses process awareness, being aware of your communication process, and talking about it in a constructive, cooperative way. Meta talk sounds like, gee, you know, I see whenever we start to talk about money, you lose eye contact with me. That's meta talk. It's talking about how you talk. That often can highlight some communication blocks that you're unaware of. It's very useful. It helps to identify and solve communication process problems. The sixth of seven skills is assertion. Pause and try and say out loud, what do you, how do you define the skill of assertion? What is that? How would you tell a 14-year-old person? Well, if you're assertive, that means blah. The American Management Association has defined assertion as the skill and art of being able to say something so that other people can hear you. Hear you. I would add to that or amend that respectfully, saying it's a way of stating your needs or your opinions or your feelings in a way that others can receive you clearly, not agree with you necessarily, but understand what you're feeling, thinking, and needing. That's assertion. There's a trick to assertion. 
which I won't go into here, but I invite you to find out in Lesson 2. If you put all six of these skills together, awareness, thinking, empathic listening, digging down, meta-talk, and assertion, that empowers you to do effective problem solving. Problem solving is identifying your and your partner's needs, true needs, and filling them. That's problem solving. So these are seven skills that anyone can learn. Most parents, most schools don't teach them, in my opinion. You can learn them. You can teach them to your kids. What a gift to give effective thinking and communication to your children and their children. I encourage you first study lesson one because it will empower you to get the most out of lesson two. Lesson two will show you many things about effective thinking and effective communication. If you choose to study lesson two, which is free self-study online, that's a group of homework assignments that I offer in the lesson guide. Um, you can give me feedback if you wish. At the bottom of every web page is a link that says contact. If you use that, you can give me criticism, praise, comments, questions, whatever you like. You can also let me know that you want to contact me. The website shows you how to do that if you need to. So, would you like to communicate instead of at, say, 50% of your, uh, your possible effectiveness? How about 70%? How about 90 percent? How about getting your needs met 90 percent of the time with other people? Does that appeal to you? You can do it. I encourage you to study lessons one and two. Thanks for watching.